European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso on a last official visit to Washington. Oh, Good to see you. Good to see you. Let me date it today. He has stressed the strategic dimensions in negotiating between Europe and the United States and discussed the Ukrainian crisis. After talks with members of Congress and the Supreme Court, Barroso received the Atlantic Council's Distinguished Leadership Award and spoke with our correspondent Stefan Grobo. Mr. President, let's talk about EU-US relations. We've had the NSA scandal that created a lot of repercussions in Europe, as you know. We have the TTIP trade talks that are very complicated, and there's a lot of resistance in Europe and in the United States. So where are we right now? Your thoughts? It's important to understand that uh, this transatlantic trade and investment partnership can be a real transformation in the global uh, economic uh, scenario, because our relationship is the biggest by far in terms of trade and investment. There were and there are some concerns. The issue of surveillance by American agencies, uh, of course, uh, is a very serious issue. And we have expressed to our American partners our concerns in a very firm and convincing way. And, uh, but we are also addressing this uh, through dialogue. On Ukraine, President Putin in Russia is riding on a wave of popularity and the sanctions, the several round of sanctions, haven't changed anything so far. When are we going to see that the sanctions make a difference and that the Russians are feeling the heat? Our goal is to show to Moscow that it is important that they de-escalate the situation which they have not done so far. They could at least take two, two uh, measures. One, to make a public, unequivocal appeal to the separatists that are making troubles in eastern part of Ukraine to um, seize those actions and to lay down their weapons. And another thing they could do, of course, is to uh, repeal that decision taken by the Duma to authorize the use of force uh, in uh, um, Ukraine. In a few months, you're going to leave the presidency of the EU Commission. What are your feelings right now? What do you think are your biggest achievements, biggest disappointments or mistakes? The fact that we were able, during these very challenging times, to keep Europe united, open and now even stronger, I think, is a, a great, uh, let's say, has a great meaning and shows that the European Union is uh, strong, that the forces of integration are stronger than the forces of disintegration. And I'm proud of the contribution the Commission has given for that purpose. Now, chances are that you know your successor personally. Um, do you have any advice for him or her? Usually the successors don't like to listen very much to the advice of the predecessors. But um, if I may, I would advise the person who succeeds me in Commission President to be patient. <laughs> uh, it's um, not easy to preside the European Commission of 28 members, a uh, very important administration, and working together with the, the member states, the Council and the European Parliament. So we have to have a lot of patience and determination hopefully a good physical shape, but uh, above all, you have to have this passion for Europe. And if you have this passion for Europe, with some good deal of patience, you can do it. I see you have that, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Great pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Good pleasure.